So today I will uh, present a report on InfiniCortex, uh, although the, I'm associated with Interdisciplinary Center for Mathematical and Computational uh, Modeling at the University of Warsaw. I've been there for only last five months. All this work has been done here in Singapore. Uh, I've lived in Singapore for 12 years, and uh, uh, I was leading uh, A-Star Computational Resource Center for almost eight years, where uh, I focused on uh, delivering uh, computational resources to A-Star scientists. But at the same time, I spent about eight years uh, trying to architect and help in create, creating National Supercomputer Center. And it is uh, during that time that uh, certain ideas uh, were brought together and we created the uh, uh, InfiniCortex. So here's a little bit of a personal story. I've been in supercomputing for over uh, almost 30 years, 10 years in Australia. Before Australia, actually for two years, I, I was using Cray 2 that was mentioned today in, in Minnesota. So I've, I've, uh, that was my personal computer at that time, the largest in the world. And during that time, uh, there were incredible uh, advances in this field, and I'm, I'm so excited to, uh, and happy to have chosen this career because, uh, as you see here, each line is one order of magnitude. If you count number of lines, vertical, uh, sort of horizontal lines here, there are 13 orders of magnitude growth in computer power, computational power, from the time first computers were created. And uh, one needs to realize this is the greatest, the fastest growth of anything that humanity ever created. Uh, it's, it's incredible if you, uh, people commonly bring uh, mobile phones uh, as an example. Mobile phone is embodiment of human knowledge in this small packet of everything, software, GPS, programming, languages, computer science, electronics, material science, everything. And of course, in supercomputers, supercomputers are much larger, but uh, you see this growth. And uh, incidentally, this sort of almost 10 years gap was when I was running a nanosensors company that was before Internet of Things. And as you have seen in previous uh, slides, that uh, funding, getting funding for hardware is unbelievably difficult. So uh, I wasn't... Uh, greatly successful in, 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 in that sense, although I, I still think we had good, good ideas. Anyway, here's the growth of, of supercomputing over a few years that I was uh, here in, in, in Singapore. Uh, these are the largest supercomputers, the research supercomputers, uh, the, the very large uh, uh, vertical sort of uh, thing is, uh, that's, that's Fujitsu supercomputer, uh, uh, of the order of one petaflop uh, computing power. And uh, so you think of this growth, and around the world, people try to follow it. There's a great ambition is to, to create exascale, uh, sort of going beyond uh, peta. And uh, nowadays, we are reaching sort of 100 petaflops uh, computing power within one single package. But there are, there are problems. And we had this problem here in Singapore when, when I was thinking of, of uh, creating National Supercomputer Center. The space is at pre premium. We don't have so much space. And of course, those large computers occupy, and also including very large storage component, occupy a lot of space. And the second thing is our data center is at the 17th floor. How do we get around five megawatts of electrical energy to 17th floor. That, that is uh, rather difficult. Of course, it has been solved. Uh, it's, it's there now. But uh, at that time, uh, we also had another data center in uh, Biopolis, about 1.2 kilometers away. And uh, I was thinking, how could we split supercomputer into, let's say, two components? How can you separate storage from compute part and make it the way that it will not uh, sacrifice performance. And uh, for this sort of distance, 1.2 kilometers, the latency is still not a problem. 
And uh, in high-performance computing, we connect storage with compute part using InfiniBand. Uh, that's the highest sort of uh, performance. So uh, that was the sort of starting point for the I idea. And then sadly, sort of uh, this project erupted in a, in a huge big way. And instead of thinking about 1.2 kilometers, we thought, how about if we do it at global scale, much larger? And so I, I want to make a very strong point. InfiniCortex is not a grid. It's concurrent supercomputer occupying the whole world. And it's not cloud. It can be cloud. It can be provisioned. And I will uh, show you some, some fine example of this, actually my favorite example. And it's not internet, because internet traffic is carried using protocol called TCP IP. We are using something that was specifically uh, uh, sort of built for connecting supercomputers in, uh, within a data center. So normal span of InfiniBand, it's called InfiniBand, was thought to be about 15, 30 meters. However, there was a project funded by DARPA in the USA where a few companies uh, uh, were created during the project, one of them Obsidian Strategics, and they have demonstrated extension of uh, InfiniBand actually without a limit. But at the time when we were starting this project, this uh, technology was only used by three-letter agencies in the US and NASA. And there, were, there was one case of demo at the University of Arizona, and one case of demo in Switzerland, but was, uh, it was only used to connect storage to compute. And we have done much more than that. We, we connected computers across uh, continents. And in this way, we sort of uh, try to sort of think of it as a globally spanning, a single concurrent computer. Of course, we are all connected through internet, but this is something different. This computer can be everywhere and can compute one problem or classes of problems. So the, the main, character, main components of this, first of all, there's something that we coined and sort of uh, thought about something we call galaxy of supercomputers, which uh, is actually a topological concept and uh, relates to a simple problem. How many connectors do you need to connect two completely different topologies? Because you can have a computer which is connected in uh, fat tree fashion, another can be tofu, like K computer in Japan, you can have hypercubes, you can have uh, all sorts of uh, topologies. And uh, how many do you need to connect two of different topologies to still preserve very good connectivity? L a low diameter of a, of a new diagram, uh, very good uh, sort of bandwidth, for a total bandwidth for, for the network. So that's the galaxy of supercomputers we have done theoretical work there with a few uh, co-workers, Yufeng Deng and Łukasz Orłowski. Then we needed a very high bandwidth across uh, Pacific and other places. And uh, at that time, if there was the first link at 100 gigabits per second, about 2013, uh, uh, from uh, North America, USA, to Europe. Mind you, at that time, there were something like 20 European countries participating in this effort. Department of Energy, uh, Synet, uh, uh, not Synet, uh, uh, anyway, lots of organizations. And at that same time, in 2014, January 2014, uh, our friend Eve Pop, who is now a contributor to the project, drew a challenge at one of the Asian conferences. He says, Asia connects America 100 gigabits per second by November. So it was less than a year. And, and uh, there was no 100 gigabits per second at the time uh, across Pacific. Mind you, Pacific is uh, way, way bigger than Atlantic. And it turned out that this challenge was only picked up by one small little country, Singapore. 
And by November 2014, we managed with the sort of uh, donated bandwidth from Tata Communications at that time. And by 2014, we had the first demo of uh, Infinicortex. And uh, of course, we have, at that time, we used uh, equipment for InfiniBand extension from uh, Obsidian Strategics. And uh, what was very important for me was to, not to just have a gimmick and some sort of technology construct, but to have very rich layer of applications. And we managed that with uh, lots of people uh, this, uh, from, from very many different organizations. That was phase one, InfiniCortex. The green line is 100 gigabits per second. We had it donated from, from Tata. Uh, here's a very important thing. Why do, do we care about using InfiniBand? InfiniBand allows couple of things. First of all, very high bandwidth utilization. You can almost reach 100% of bandwidth using this protocol, whereas when you use TCP IP, you barely, barely, with lots of tuning, can use about one-fifth of that. If you approach 20% of your bandwidth, that's a lot. Here, this is the, 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 the chart from, from this first demonstration in 2014. Uh, next thing, you also have something called RDMA, Remote uh, Distributed Memory Access, which means that if I connect two computers and they are remotely located, I don't need to uh, go to and ask for what's going on in the memory of the other. I don't have to inquire with the operating system. There's no interference. That means latency is lower down. It's something like if I wanted to ask you a question, and I know that the answer is in your mind, I don't ask you, you a question. I go and pull the, the answer from your mind. That's our DMA. Another interesting feature of this technology is that we had uh, <coughs> uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, here's one of the examples of uh, transport of data, uh, about 1.2 terab uh, terabits uh, of data set, genomic set, from uh, Canberra via Seattle to Singapore. Normal way, 12 and a half hours, with our technology 30 times faster. Uh, here is a demo a year after. An important thing for Singapore is that, based on, on the success of previous year, those links across Pacific and the link uh, from, from Singapore to Europe Sadly, uh, we have them permanently as an arrangement between Singa Singaran and Internet tool co-shared 50-50. That means because we demonstrated something, Singapore has got permanent 100 gig with USA. Whether it's for Infinicortex or for anything else, doesn't matter. Singapore has got it. Uh, so at that time, we also had the uh, University of Reims in France, Poznan, Supercomputer Networking Center, at, at Tokyo Tech, and, and many other partners. A year, at that time, we have also uh, introduced uh, InfiniBand routing. There was no equipment. It was impossible to route inf InfiniBand traffic. So that was the first uh, demonstration in the world. And we had seven subnets over four continents. And this is something, a really neat thing. We had cloud. HPC, true cloud, of arbitrary scale over four continents. So imagine that you press a button on your keyboard, and suddenly you switch on a global computer with software environment of your choosing, running huge programs or smaller or workflows or all sorts of things. And there's absolutely no, no, no geographical limit on that. So I think that is the best cloud I have ever seen. Uh, here's an example of, of this uh, pipeline, genomic pipeline, running on this, uh, on this Infini Cloud uh, thing over four continents. You see that there are <laughs> computers uh, engaged in all sorts of uh, places. The, this is the topology of uh, subnets, and uh, as you see, each one is separately addressable. This is routing using InfiniBand. Uh, here are examples of applications, and we have a couple of dozens of applications. We've done it with uh, co uh, contributors from Oak Ridge, uh, Scott Klasky Group with Adios, uh, 
this adaptive input-output uh, system which allows very fast reading and uh, writing into parallel file systems uh, with Rutgers and the uh, Fermilab. And uh, this, uh, this com computation that you see here, when they run on the, this is one of the largest supercomputer program ever created. Uh, it runs, for example, for the whole day on Jaguar or Titan uh, nowadays, and uh, it can cost $300,000 a, a run, single run. But they simulate what happens in the thermonuclear reactor. And uh, by observing those blobs, it, if the blob hits the uh, actual prototype reactor, the reactor has to be shut down for several weeks and costs millions of dollars. So still better to run those sort of codes. And the, co the, the, the experiments are done in, for example, in Korea, South Korea. The analysis and observation is done <laughs> at the DOE labs in Oak Ridge. Of course, uh, there's extremely fast uh, uh, stream of, of images coming from, from this, so you need, you need to observe it. So uh, on the basis of, of, of this Infinicortex project, uh, f f we've implemented a very interesting solution for access nodes for supercomputer center. So now login nodes in all these uh, uh, universities are connected with InfiniBand, giving immediate access and a feel of, of immediacy uh, to all the users. And of course, it will be extended to industrial centers. And uh, so the f this year, we have done for the third time InfiniCortex demo. Now I'm, I'm in Poland. Poland is in a very uh, interesting situation. There are five uh, petaflop uh, supercomputers in five different centers. And Poland has got something absolutely unique. unique. There's something called Pioneer Academic Network. Uh, with the fiber spanning over 7,500 kilometers. And the fiber is owned by research institutions and connects various countries, all the neighboring countries, uh, Ukraine and uh, Belarus and Czech Republic, Slovak Republic, Germany. So, of course, there's a through traffic. And in uh, this way, uh, the, the research entities own this uh, network, which is different than here, because here, even with the traffic between the universities, the carriers are commercial companies. So that, that uh, lets us think of implementing uh, InfiniCortex in the country's uh, scale as a permanent uh, artifact, as an operational thing. So after three years of, of uh, testing and demos, uh, I, I hope that we will introduce and we'll connect uh, this. Here are people who contributed to the project. Professor Tan Tin Wee, who is now a director of National Supercomputer Center, a uh, great enthusiast of uh, international networking. Prof. Yu Feng Deng on, on this work for, for topology. Yves Pop, who helped us to, to get the bandwidth. David Southwell, who created uh, this uh, Obsidian you know, uh, range extenders and routers. And we had lots of partners, a very, very complex. Uh, uh, you can't do anything in networking without networking with people. And that's, that's how we have done this. And uh, now, now I postulate something uh, as if my final slide. Perhaps, perhaps we can risk a statement that the InfiniCortex can uh, constitute a new class of computers in the sense of Bell's law. And here's the Bell's, Bell's law. It's just a statement that uh, roughly every decade, a new lower price computer class forms based on new programming platform. It's not cheaper, actually, not lower price. It's extremely expensive. Supercomputers are expensive, but actually gives us, uh, if you think about it, <laughs> about the energy pressure on the, uh, any particular site for a petascale or exascale computer, there's a drain in energy, there's a cost, and there's a limit, a physical limit of how, how large you can build. But now imagine that you connect 1,000 petascale computers, you have exascale computer. If you connect those biggest computers, if you, uh, of course, uh, if you need to have so much computing resource for a single problem. But then uh, that gives you three orders of magnitude immediately or more, beyond what physically can be done. Thank you very much.